great to have you with us and in our first story. The Africa Center for Security and Counterterrorism has cautioned government against the seeming abuse of national security operatives in dealing with executive director, uh, well, in dealing with security concerns, of course. Executive director Emmanuel Cotin tells Joy News the country risks suffering from far-reaching effects if it fails to rethink its continued use of national security as if it is independent of the statutory state security agencies. He, his caution comes at the back of the arrest of two modern Ghana journalists who were arrested last Thursday by national security. State continued use of the national security operatives as if it is independent of other state statutory security agencies. Our fear is that you agree with me that the current public confidence and cooperation with our security agencies is at its lowest help now. And we are looking at how we can civil educate the civil population to cooperate with our security agencies, given that in the 21st century, security is about intelligence gathering. And you can only get the intelligence through the citizenry. That is why we are worried. And it's quite troubling that the Honorable uh, Minister for National Security, Honorable Kandapa, having seen his contribution to our fledging democracy, especially in the Fourth Republican Constitution, given that he was an MP, Minister of Interior, Minister of Defense, the Chairman of the Public mm -hmm. Account Committee, and now the Minister of National Security, who we'll sit down and watch some of these things unfold under his watch. So we are of the view that it's two things. We look at the ultimate responsibility reference international law, whether he takes the responsibility and call his boys and girls to order, or the presence or the government speak to the matter. Otherwise, it is leaving a gap, and it seems to be patronizing as if government is condoning what uh, the national security operatives are doing and their acts were very deplorable, it has no place in modern democracy, and especially a democracy such as ours. Mm -hmm. We also believe that the actions of national security is denting the image of the president as the champion of human rights, and rightly so, no one can doubt his credibility when it comes to fighting for the ordinary person on the streets. We also believe that it is about time we civic educate the citizenry to know their rights as citizens. And if you look at the security implications of what is unfolding under our eyes, it is not a good thing at all. Meanwhile, National Security says two of the modern Ghana journalists it arrested last Thursday will be put before court today. Emmanuel Dafor Abugri, one of the two alleges that they were tortured and manhandled while in detention. The incident has been condemned by some, including the private newspaper Publishers Association and the Media Foundation for West Africa, which described it as embarrassing. Executive Director Suleiman Abraima said government should be concerned about this seeming unending trend. A, a situation where it's about rule of force and not rule of law. Um, I, think, I think that it must be embarrassing for the government for this to have happened. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't contemplate what would justify the nature and manner in which we've heard these people were picked up and now we are hearing uh, that they were tortured. It's something that is deeply embarrassing for our country. Um, those of us within this space have received several calls from the international community. Um, some of them saying, we've read this about Ghana, but we don't believe this could happen in Ghana. Can you confirm it for us? You know, and, and so I think government must immediately take steps to ensure that, yes, if these people have committed any um, offense or any crime, um, they are handled in accordance with the law and not uh, on the basis of who has power and who can teach anybody um, a lesson on the basis of deploying national security um, to do what we are told um, happened. My colleague Joseph Akable has been finding out from the court if there's going to be any case like that, and he joins us with more. Joe, what have you found out at court? 
Well, Daniel, so the information we had picked up initially did indicate that uh, they were going to be arraigned at uh, the circuit court. And so far, uh, we have checked with the various registries here at the circuit court. And as it stands now, there is no such case that has been filed by the state prosecutors. And also we checked from the court list, which is a list of cases scheduled for the day. And also we didn't find any such case uh, by that title or the name of the individuals uh, who are involved in this particular matter. But that is not strange. Uh, there have been other cases that we have covered in times past that were also not listed or not filed as at midday, uh, but it takes a bit of just some few hours or minutes, then it goes to the police and it's assigned to a judge to be heard. And so that is why uh, we are still waiting here at a circuit court in anticipation that if uh, such a case will be filed as had been indicated by the National Security Secretariat Council, then that is going to happen. So we are still monitoring my assistance now. I can report that no such case has been filed or slated to be listed for hearing today. Now, for the sake of our listeners, Joseph, is it possible that this could be filed in any other court? Um, from our sources here, we understand that for such a matter, uh, the appropriate form must either be a circuit court or it must be at a district court. In either way, it will still have to come to the registry from which it's going to emanate to the exact court where to be assigned. So once it's filed, it's a registry uh, in conjunction with the Chief Justice Office that does the assignment. So it obviously has to begin from where we are monitoring the prisoner before it's even handed to a judge for the docket to be moved straight to that courtroom. So we are at the point where the process actually starts. Thank you very much, Joseph Akable, for that. And like Joseph said, we are still stationed at the registry where we'll be finding out if any such case is filed. Away from that story, some residents of Choco here in Accra have appealed to government to provide the area with more dustbins so they can properly dispose of their waste. Plastic waste has engulfed the entire shoreline there, raising concerns about health hazards it poses. Fishermen there also tell Joy News the situation is adversely affecting their fishing business. Vanessa Akaama has more. Choco, a coastal community, is located in the southwestern part of Accra. The beach is virtually covered with all forms of filth, including old clothes, but mostly discarded plastics. Gradually, the filth is heaping up, and this has become an eyesore for many, including residents. But amidst the jumble of filth are children heartily playing. Some squat to defecate just close to where other children are playing. Although there are public toilets in the community, Many residents prefer the beach. The sea is also drowned with plastics, and as children swim, they compete with black polythene bags. Liquid waste from the community is directly channeled into the sea, and this could expose children to various forms of infections and illnesses. Although residents agree that they have not managed filth properly in their community, they say some of the filth are transported from other communities. Rubbish inside the sea inside. So the rubbish, they there plenty. We don't so dump rubbish here because we are not able to afford the price charge at the dumping site. That's because there are not enough rubbish containers there. So we need more rubbish containers in this area. The rubbish is really worrying us. Zoom Lion used to collect them, but now they have stopped, making the beach very unclean. We are now surrounded by rubbish. The rubbish comes from the hill down to the beach. It is affecting our fishing business. We only get little or no fish when we go fishing. The plastic is not just an eyesore. It's also affecting the fishing business in Choco. Fishermen say any time they cast their net, they trap filth instead of fish. When it rains, it flows through the gutter straight into the sea. We don't get fishes. We only get rubbish when we go fishing. And it's brought hardship on us. The story of filth engulfing this community is not new, but it persists because of bad littering habits of the people. 
but the residents are appealing to municipal authorities to provide the community with rubbish containers for proper disposal of garbage. I'd like to talk to the government to make sure that it creates more dustbin locations available around the vicinity, especially the, those are swarm areas and those are the seashores because most of our rubbish from the top to the down. And you know that every ocean, every lake or every river links to the sea. So definitely it might, the rubbish may not come from this community, but it may come from the far day to this end. So as a result, you may see that this community created the rubbish, but actually it's not from this community. So it means the people over there are lacking containers. At the end of it, it affects this community. Now, government may not ban plastics entirely. That's according to Minister for Environment, Science and Technology, Professor Kwamna Frimpon Boateng. There have been growing calls by some Ghanaians and pressure groups for governments to ban the use of plastics due to what they say is its adverse effect on the environment and the health of the people. But stakeholders in the plastics industry have warned of the economic um, consequences of such a decision. President Ekofado at a recent climate change conference said governments will soon announce its decision on the matter. But speaking at a Meet the Press series in Accra today, Professor Boating said a resource recovery center at CSIR is working on the plastic waste policy. And my colleague Ernest Menu is at that meeting and he joins us on the line. Ernest, did the minister say what kind of plastics may be banned? Well, um, uh, Daniel, he wasn't specific on the kind of plastics that will be banned, except to say that in some areas where plastics are being used, uh, that they may consider banning it. For instance, if you want to go and get your watch uh, from the uh, vendor nearby, he thinks that the vendor shouldn't be able to sell to you in a, in a rubber or a polythene bag. There should be bows or other means of serving your, your watch. Um, if you go to the supermarket, for instance, uh, there should be paper bags, and you shouldn't be given, you know, uh, uh, plastic bags uh, for, for your shopping. And so these are the areas uh, they are looking at, the ways in which, uh, in which plastic is, is being used. Then they can ban those areas. But as to the, the nature of the plastic, he wasn't specific, Daniel. So when he says areas, he means he will ban plastics among certain professions? Yes, for, for want of a better expression, among certain uh, economic areas. Okay, that. okay. Um, he also gave an indication of what the scientists at CSIR will be considering in drafting the waste policy. Yes, Can you uh, so he gave shed some five, more light? He gave five indicators, Daniel. Uh, he talked about the fact that the policy will look at behavioral change. They will also look at cross-sectoral collaboration, you know, how you can collaborate with other sectors uh, to make this more effective. And the economy, which is a huge chunk of this, uh, you know, plastic issue, the economic factor, job creation. And the fourth point, uh, the policy will be looking at resource mobilization and also finally the governance of, of plastic. So these are the areas uh, the scientists will be looking at in drafting the policy. Thank you very much, Ernest Menu, for that update. We stay on this subject because some food sellers at unhygienic places at Asafo have had their items seized as Multimedia has partnered the Kumase Metropolitan Assembly on its first day of enforcement of its sanitation bylaws. The enforcement drive was launched on Friday to improve sanitation in the Garden City. Love FM's Erastus Asari Donko joined. Well, Erastus has joined us on the line. Erastus, tell us about today. What did you do? What, what happened? Well, so um, as the initiative of the KMA uh, to start enforcing vigorously its bylaws on sanitation. And so uh, multimedia also had a vision of also uh, working on sanitation as well because we felt it's a needed venture in Kubase uh, when you look at our, our streets and all that. And so we teamed up together uh, with a task force set up by the Kumasi mayor himself and we started from Asafo this morning. Uh, so far, we've been to the postal area. Uh, in some places, we found out that the fish sellers had displayed fish on the ground. 
in a muddy environment. Some of the crates that they were putting the fish in were very dirty and, in fact, uh, uh, making the food unwholesome. As they were warned and issued with letters to abate that nuisance. But when the KMA director uh, found out that they were still where they were, the fish uh, was still in the crate, they had to go and seize them. So they seized about uh, three cartons of uh, the tilapia that was uh, being displayed on the ground. We've been to other areas where people were found urinating in uh, market areas close to where they sell food. And so one such gentleman has been arrested, and currently he has been made uh, to do community work by cleaning the uh, drain and cleaning the entire surroundings. So this has been replicated across the length and breadth of Asapo as we speak. Right. Thank you very much, Erastus. Before you go, though, what more should we expect in this partnership that multimedia has undertaken with the KMA? In fact, we are going to roll all the videos we have captured, those whose items were seized, those who were uh, uh, trading in an unauthorized area, very filthy environment, and the action that has been taken. We're going to roll them, and we're going to move to a different location, which will be announced by the task force uh, from tomorrow going. So uh, people should sit well and uh, clean their environment and make sure that they live in a very uh, 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 sane environment that is good for uh, business. John for joining us with that update. Now, to come in this bullet, Ghana meets Guinea-Bissau in a must-win encounter to progress to the next stage of the 2019 Total Africa Cup of Nations. Later today, Infant Swim School will be competing against St. Augustine's College and Swedu Senior High School. The contest will be live in Georgia. Stay with us for the very least. Thanks for staying with us. And the Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Hafiz Bin Saleh, has assured the people of the region of their safety despite arrest of two gun-wielding men from Burkina Faso suspected to be part of a terrorist group unleashing attacks on that country. He said the government has taken steps through the national security to enhance regular monitoring patrols in the region and in particular at the borders surrounding those areas uh, to check uh, such perpetrators before it's too late. Dr. Bintali gave the assurance at the commemoration of Senior Citizens Day at Issa in the Dafyama Busie Issa district. Join News' Upper West correspondent Rafik Salam reports from Issa. Unlike previous years, where the celebration of the day was always held in Wa, this year's regional commemoration of Republic Day or Senior Citizens Day took place at Isa in the Defima Bure Isa district. Upper West Regional Minister Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali praised the senior citizens for their enormous and selfless contributions to the development of the country in the area of education, health, security among others. Even in retirement, Dr. Bin Sali quipped that their counsel is still required and very relevant in shaping ideas as far as meeting the development needs of the people. Turning to the recent arrest of two gang welding Burkina Bays on two separate occasions, suspected to be part of terrorists unleashing attacks on Burkina Faso, Dr. Binsali assured the people of the region of their safety. These reports created fear and panic among many people of possible terrorist attack in the region and the country at large. I want to allay the fears and to assure you that government has taken steps through the Ministry of National Security to enhance regular monitoring patrols in the region and particularly at the borders and surrounding areas to check such perpetration before, perpetrators before it is too late. These patrols, as I am informed, have also reduced crime and robbery in these areas. The Fema Bure is a district chief executive Nadi Murosanda urged senior citizens to take advantage of the government flagship programs, especially the recently launched Reading for Food and Job. We anticipate that these programs, among others, will fully engage our senior citizens to continue to be very productive 
that will largely sustain them and their families and also the country as a whole. There was an open forum which gave the senior citizens opportunity to speak about the Elson Society. A similar event was also held at Fancy, capital of the Wai district. Wai district chief executive Jyoti Moses appealed to the senior citizens to continue to serve the country despite their newfound roles. Until her retirement this year, as a midwife, Juliana Yeku Kabu, for the past 31 years, has worked in hard to reach communities in the Upper West region and has delivered hundreds of babies. When it rains, when I was going there, my colleagues would tell me that you are going there, buy your salt, plenty, even a bag of salt, and make sure your food and everything is ready. Because when it rains, you cannot come to town. That's why they used to tell me. And when I was coming to Fancy, they told me, they say, buy your salt. All these rivers you see on the way. So they when it rains, and then you remain. If you are in Wai, you cannot come to Fancy. If you are in Fancy, you can't go to Wai. So all that we have experienced about, it's a must that you should go. If you don't go, what do those people there do? Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam, Isa. Live on Joe News today with me, Daniel Dunn. Stay with us. Like I said earlier, aside the Black Stars and the Guinea Bissau football match, there's actually another contest today. I'm talking about that make or break contest. St. Augustine's College and the Fan Swim School alongside Swedish Senior High School, will lock horns to book a place in the quarterfinals of the ongoing National Science and Maths Quiz. It's live at 4 p.m. on this channel. Your joining this channel certainly don't want, you don't want to miss uh, the thrills and the jeers of the moment. And I have a gentleman here in the studio who has been bragging all day, Augustus Kojo Yangtzee. Kojo. Daniel. You seem to be deluded by this, um, you know, fantasy that you are winning today's contest. Well, in actually, some way. I'm not paying too much attention to whether or not I'm winning. I'm, I'm curious about which of the other two schools <coughs> will come second. Um, I don't think <laughs> Fancy Pims should be fancying their chances against Widru <laughs> Secondary School. They are a formidable team. We, of course, are <laughs> obviously winning. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, look, it's not going to be as tough as you anticipate. You know, losing to St. Augustine's <laughs> College is still quite a privilege. In fact, I hear that your, your girls, the um, Wesley Girls High mm -hmm. School, uh, have come together and uh, put together some money for some trauma <laughs> therapy for the Vansipim boys once the okay. contest is okay. over. Okay, okay. I, I don't dispute the fact that Swedish Senior High School is a very good school. Indeed. They and display they will that excellently. Yeah. When last year, they kicked me out of the regional contest. Yes, indeed. And because of the last year, you could not even even qualify for the nationals when it comes to the national science and maths quiz. This is true. Now, this is the one eight stage. We, on the mm. other hand, have done no worse than quarterfinal at mm. least since about 2014. Yes. Which shows that when it comes to form, mm. when it comes to the team, yeah. which has shown consistency in the mm. past five years, it's, yeah. it happens to be fan swim school. Mm. Daniel, you sound like one of those people who works lotto numbers. You know, you take past numbers and you think you can predict future numbers from there. Some people get it sounds like rich. something uh, that <laughs> Some you, get you might be, you might be taught that. at some fans in <laughs> school. But in, in St. Augustine's College, we deal with reality. And the reality is that this year in the competition, mm. we are the school that has won with the largest, uh, the highest number of points, 76 points in one contest. You do know that the number of points you mm. win with in a contest depends mm. on your opposition, right? No, it depends on you. It team. actually depends you on your the, opposition you're, you're because that is it depends partly on your position mm. because when you get more bonus points, your points get higher. Mm. Of course, I don't expect you to understand the full rudiments of the national science and maths. No, because quiz. I'm not Seeing competing as you for St. Augustine's College. This year. I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> two intelligent, smart boys are competing for us. We're cheering them on. And I hear that all paracetamol manufacturers have come together <laughs> and put together a deal for Kwabuchi students. Uh, when you buy a pack of paracetamol, it comes with a super absorbent <laughs> towel for wiping away your sweat and tears. Uh, good okay. luck to St. Augustine's. We're winning. Uh, it. Good luck to Fast Film School. Uh, as if we need it, uh, we have taken the contest. 
Nathaniel also wants to barge into the <laughs> <laughs> Brother studio. Shati. Okay, in the first place, <laughs> Nat, you are, you, are, you are really, really doing the typical Ogasco boy thing by walking in without a mic in the middle of my bullets. But I'm going to give I you hope a everybody minute. can hear me. Um, you yeah. see, we are regional champions. We came in here as regional champions, number one. Number two, we don't, you know, bother ourselves what happens, you know, within that geographical region of Ghana. Remember that for the first time in the history of this quiz, when it was expanded to the West African sub-region, we won it. West so African the champions. West African sub-region for the very what first that time. <laughs> you see, so, you see, let's just take it easy. Let, let nobody also forget that in the history of this tournament or this, uh, this competition as well, this is the very first time that a school or a college has scored in excess of 70 points in the preliminary stages. We, we have that should just tell you. Look, we have just tell you. Excuse me. That should just tell you. The 76 points arguments, number one, number two. St. Augustine's won the regional contest and was competing in the preliminary contest because, again, you were not here last year. Okay. Those yeah, of us who were here last year, we, excuse we. me, those of us who were here last year were not even at the stage where you were racking up points by taking bonus points off schools, which I don't There's know. There's a very simple message from. in there, Daniel. But Let me just again, tell you why. Again, not, the simple not, message not. is that we take everything serious. You see, you are saying that boss, you had to take it serious. If you had not taken it serious, we you wouldn't even be at the one in Every stage. single step of the way. You see, we are meticulous <laughs> look, like that, look, and we look, take attention, look, look, serious me, attention look, to detail. Look, look, we have to let do, me, we have to let do me wrap up with this. We let have me wrap to do up with this. Yeah, look, we, we, in St. Augustine's College, we believe in corporate social responsibility. Thank you very much. We gave Swedro Secondary School the opportunity to compete the Nationals last year. The young And you see how it has inspired them, and they are back again, and they will beat Kwabuche this evening. You see, but look, we have to go. So because yeah, so we, we uh, in the spirit of corporate social responsibility, we want to go and fuel your bone shaker <laughs> so that it can convey uh, the uh, Kwabuchi students back to your school before <sighs> they close the Kotokraba gate uh, tonight. Thank you. And, you know, and Nathaniel yeah, the Black Stars are playing today and we are starting off with positive omens so the Black Stars <laughs> can win. Thank you very much. We'll be back. Kojo Yangsen and Nathaniel Ato <laughs> sharing their fanciful dreams here on... <laughs> Join us today. Of course, we know where the chips fall lie like, when they do fall. Yes, Maxwell Agbagba is, however, currently at the University of Ghana Business School, where he's standing by Maxwell. We're live at 4 p.m. Um, tell us a bit more of what to expect today. Well, um, Daniel, just some minutes ago, uh, we had some old students of Central Gaffney College arriving here at the Harris and Agashi uh, they, they, I mean, they, they have been thinking for the past... Uh, uh, I mean, for the past minutes that they've been here, they've been thinking inside. We've seen some infantile students also um, inside Aris Amagashi Auditorium. I've been speaking to the organizers, and they tell me that all is set um, for the contest at 4 o'clock. So when you come here, um, the basement of the Aris Amagashi Auditorium is filled with chairs. And we have um, a projector that would uh, project whatever that would be happening, you know, um, on the screen. And then also, at the car park of the University of Ghana Business School, uh, what we have um, is the... Uh, we have experiential mobile tracks actually packed on the University of Ghana Business School car park. And there, um, people uh, who would not get a seat inside and also at the basement of the University of Ghana Business School will have the chance and opportunity to watch this contest at the car park. So basically, um, all is set. And <laughs> we've been hearing from um, the old students. So Gaston said, I mean, the old students of Gaston said, Gaston said, that they're going to win this contest. And they are touting um, their, uh, you know, win as a regional championship where they came up against uh, Wesley Girls. In fact, they won a particular contest as a regional championship. So we are saying that, look, it looks bright, very bright, <laughs> you know, for us, this particular uh, contest. Right. Daniel. Thank you very much, Maxwell Agbagba, for the very latest. There is still everyone joining you today. Stay with us. Thank you.